I'm Dr. Khalid, family doctor from London, and in this video, I'll cover seven key principles that everyone should know to help maintain a longer and healthier life. So if you are in your 30s, 40s, or beyond, these lifestyle changes can make a huge difference in improving your health. Now, I don't know about you, but for me personally, when I look back, it was in my 30s that I started to think about my health. 20s was just having fun and getting on with life. But after having two kids and I kind of thought, gee, I, I need to kind of stick around. I need to watch them grow up, protect them, provide for them. And it got me thinking, what would be some key lessons that I've learned in my 30s that I think would be really important for 40s and 50s beyond? The very first one is quitting alcohol or any other bad habit that you have, whether it's smoking, gambling, any of those. I recently did a little survey with my patients, kind of just asking them, you know, what is the most important lifestyle change they've made in their 30s and quitting smoking and quitting alcohol was right at the top. Now, I can't say I've done the same for alcohol. I personally don't smoke, but I did notice that in my 20s, when I'd go on a night out or have a drink, the next day was just pretty normal. I could go to lectures, I could get on with my day. And our body's ability to handle alcohol is completely different as we age. And, and recent guidelines have come out that suggest no amount of alcohol is actually good for us. It used to be that, you know, a glass of wine is good for your heart. The other thing about alcohol that I've found is it disturbs your sleep. I feel more tired and I feel like crap the next morning if I've been drinking the night before. Now, I'm not saying never drink alcohol again, but beyond the glass of wine at a social event, it may be better for us to put alcohol completely to one side. Your older and healthier self, I think, will thank you for that. Number two, social connections. And, and this may surprise you, but loneliness and a lack of social connection is one of the biggest causes of death later in life. It's comparable to smoking 15 cigarettes a day, which is mind-boggling for me because we talk about the dangers of smoking like non-stop. It's so well known, but I still don't think people fully understand the impact of loneliness. And unfortunately, in the developed world, loneliness is an epidemic. I often see only patients on a home visit as a family doctor and maybe I'm their only one human interaction that week and we have about 10-15 minutes while I assess them at home and it's sad on a deeper level because we're all kind of social animals tribal animals that are fitting into this modern world a modern world where people are doing nine to five jobs until their late 60s where we have so little time for ourselves for extended families to make connections and we are like living in densely populated cities with tiny apartments, probably never even having more than a hello with our neighbor or the people on the way to work. And I don't even think we're seeing the full impact of it. I think social media has made this disconnect even worse. People are just on their phone, not talking to each other, and I don't feel we're more connected. For me personally, I'm pretty introverted, and I've noticed that when I'm not connecting with friends, or it's been a while since I've had a catch up with a mate of mine, I do feel that it affects how I feel. My suggestion would be to try and put more effort into fostering connections. They don't come kind of magically. It takes a lot of hard work, especially with connections that you've lost with old friends or work colleagues. You may even be able to take up new hobbies and meet new people in the evening. It sounds like a lot of effort, but that's exactly what it takes. It's the same way as quitting smoking or getting rid of diabetes. It takes a lot of effort and it won't come naturally and easily at the beginning. But we've seen the health benefits, and if we can get those connections and build those over years, you are likely to add so many more years to your life. From my point of view, this is an area that I've made more effort in over the last year, and I reconnected actually with an old um, high school friend of mine who actually lives in China now. But we've been able to work out the time difference to jump on and play some games online uh, maybe around about once a week and we're on our mobile phones at the same time and it's pretty cool because we play this 90s game called heroes of my magic and i had no idea he still played it so you may be surprised it's important to i think try and reconnect with those old friends number three is exercise more look uh, there's no easy way of saying this as you grow older keeping fit and healthy gets tougher and tougher having a routine exercising regularly whether it's jogging or playing sports or weightlifting can be so important for our physical but also for our mental health i can tell in the weeks that i'm playing football i feel so much better in myself and studies have shown the importance of weight-bearing exercises as well 
aerobic exercises. These are all things that we should be incorporating into our day-to-day -day lives. But I also know how difficult it can be, especially when you start things off. The key one here is once you start to commit and you build a routine and you form a habit around it, then it's more likely to succeed. Number four, meditation and yoga. The science behind the health benefits of yoga and meditation is growing. I found both of those useful. I probably do more meditation to be fair. And what I've done is I've kind of incorporated it into my wind down routine just before I go to sleep. For me personally, it just helps me relax a little bit, de-stress and kind of get the clutter of day-to-day -day life out of the way. In my clinics, I'm probably seeing 30 to 40 patients a day and those conversations and trying to help those people with their health problems can feel cluttering and busy. So we use apps like Calm and I've used Headspace as well. I think I prefer Calm a little bit more. And say if that's too expensive, I would recommend just literally YouTubing Yoga Nidra and there's like a 12 million views video that's 20 minutes long. And some nights when I'm struggling to sleep, we put that on. It basically goes through different parts of your body, noticing it, relaxing it, by the end of it, I'm asleep. And again, this may be a reflection of me in my 20s, but I thought this was all hippie stuff, like, ah, oh, what am I going to do? Meditation? But the core of it is that now it is kind of a core part of my routine, and I wouldn't be able to function as well as I do now without it. Number five, look after your teeth. This is one of those where you realize it after you have dental issues, and then you tell everybody else, make sure you look after your teeth. But seriously, dental problems can be a pain in the backside or jaw, if you like. They can be expensive, they can be difficult, and often it's through years of not kind of doing the right things that you get there. It takes only a few seconds every morning to do the flossing, to do the proper brushing, and also making sure that you keep up your six monthly appointments with your dental hygienist and your dentist. I think your older self will appreciate that so much more when you're not having to fork out thousands to fix a problem. How many of you guys had dental problems where you look back and said, oh, I could have done more to look after my teeth? Um, let me know in the comments if you have. Number six, good sleep. This is like the holy grail of life in your 30s and beyond, especially if you are up in the morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. with kids. By the way, all those books about how to become millionaires and CEOs, like productivity books, bullshit. I'm up every day at 5 a.m. Not a millionaire, not a billionaire. Not happened. They're lies. Sleep is super important for our bodies to rest, repair, process the things that have happened to us on a day-to-day -day level, and is one of the most important things to focus on. It can reduce your risk of mental health problems, can help you lose weight, and, and there are more benefits to good sleep than you can shake a stick at. So why do we struggle so much? Well, so for me personally, my sleep was generally reasonable unless I was getting into a stressful situation in life, so exams, work situations, relationship issues. What I'm finding now that's more of a problem is that we have a routine with two kids, two kids under three, and I am finding that trying to fit all that in, getting them to bed and having a bit of time for myself is difficult. So what that does is it pushes my bedtime later than I would like it to. And also sometimes in the middle of the night you wake up because one of the kids has a nightmare. I'm finding more and more that getting back off to sleep is difficult. And so there are sleep hygiene advice out there, things like blackening out the room, no noise, no lights, that kind of thing. They're usually generally quite good. But for me, I found that getting back off to sleep after you wake up a bit of a problem. So I've tried a few things. The latest one I'm trying at the moment is CBT, so cognitive behavior therapy through an app called Sleep Reset. And it's working really well for me. If you're having similar problems, then have a look at the app. I'll leave a link. It is something that we do recommend as doctors. So CBT for sleep problems is really important and it can be really beneficial. Number seven is cutting out ultra processed food and basically cooking more. Over the pandemic with busier lives and having less time to cook, we've seen a rise in things like delivery apps, the obesity epidemic, and the bottom line is you feel like crap when you're eating trash. The science of like the brain gut access is growing and the link between eating healthy food and having better health and mental health outcomes are growing. And it's an area that we as a family are putting more focus in, especially after the pandemic, where we were looking at how much we were using food delivery apps as tired parents, still having tons of toys to pick up off the floor, doing chores. It felt like a simple win to be like, okay, at least food is sorted. But it was building like a really unhealthy lifestyle, which I don't really want to pass on to my children. I want them to grow up with healthy meals, home-cooked meals. And so these are the seven pillars to work towards. Don't beat yourself up if you can't reach every single one of them all of the time. There are a lot that I struggle with, but 
at least they're in the background. I know which direction I need to go. And if you are somebody who struggles with sleep, then click on the next video where I talk about some science back tips to help you. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.